So hi, Amy, thank you for talking with me today. Hi, how are you? I am fantastic. Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Same to you. So I have been watching your episodes. Um, I think they are amazing anytime, but they're especially amazing right now with everything going on with the economy. The prices of groceries are on the rise. Um, and like many, I'm cooking at home more and I want to make sure that my family is eating well. Um, so I, I think my my first thought here is with the price of groceries, it's extremely important to make sure that we cut down on food waste. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> excuse me. So uh, do you have any tips or, or tricks, things that you use to make sure that you're trying to make sure you prevent things from spoiling or um, you keep things in a rotation enough that you're keeping it fresh, but going through your supply? Absolutely. I hate that because I feel like when you're wasting food, you're throwing away money. Um, one of my things that I do, especially with like salad greens, I hate when they go bad in like two days and you're like, right. I just bought this. Right. Um, you know, some of them will come in the little plastic containers. I try to put like paper towels in there because when the moisture gets in them, then I feel like they turn over quickly. Right. Um, so that kind of helps prolong life. And then when they start, like, say you have spinach, where I had some spinach that I use in our smoothies and then it's starting to kind of smoothies and salads and it's starting to turn. But tonight I'm making like a noodle bowl and I'm just going to throw all the spinach in so it doesn't go bad. And we're going to have like extra veggies in our noodle broth bowl. So it's cooking it down rather than wasting it and just trying to use it up. Right. Um, another way to utilize like scraps and things like that, which I really enjoy is having a scrap bag. So I save all of my carrot peels, my onion peels, my celery ends, my parsley stems, and then I eventually make broth and you can either use as a meat-based broth with some like chicken bones and things like that, that you have, or you can just do a veggie stock and add that to any rice, um, or veggie sautés that you have. And it just adds really good flavor. So you're just using things that you would throw in the trash or the compost and repurposing it into more food. I didn't think about that. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So I know that a lot of us hear about, um, especially this time of year, um, you go to the grocery store, you make sure you have the milk and eggs and bread and prepare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and those are staples that most of us keep on hand anyways. Um, are there any ingredients other than the milk and the eggs and the bread that you always have in your pantry or always have in your repertoire to use at all times? Mine is probably onions and garlic. I always like to have those as to add extra little flavors to, um, you know, dishes and things like that. You can also like dry seasonings, you know, you can always go in a different direction. Say if you have some dried cumin or you have some like cumin and some chili peppers, you can kind of do like a Mexican taco type seasonings. And if you have some Italian seasoning with granulated garlic and onions, you can put that on like chicken and maybe squeeze some lemon on it and go in a different direction. So you can kind of use seasonings as changing your pro pro flavor profiles within food um, and not have to go out and buy a bunch of things and just have a staple of a mm -hmm. set up pantry. Okay. And I know for me, um, so my family, uh, I'm really working. I have, I have two small children. Um, so I'm working on trying to like build up what they eat. And right now protein is really important for me. Um, are there cuts of meat, if you will, or chicken, or what would, what do you go for when you go to the grocery store to make sure you're trying to get those proteins in, um, but you don't have a lot of money to spend? Yeah. So proteins, I think there's different ways to disguise them. Like kids always like I know my son, he loves meatballs. So if I can make little tiny meatballs, even if you can take like ground chicken and then coat it in a little bit of like a panko and then bake it in the oven, it's like a chicken nugget, mm -hmm. um, but it's homemade. And then you right. can also make what I do is I make a bunch of them and then I throw them in the freezer. And then when he's hungry, I can just pop it out and take in the microwave. Um, shopping sales. Like when I go to Costco, I get like that three pack of ground Turkey and it's really inexpensive. And then you can use it for quite a bit of different things. So if you think about it, you have the ground Turkey you can do like, okay, we're going to have a taco night one night. We could do the chicken tenders that I was just talking about and maybe, right. um, some pasta and meatballs, you know, something. So things are on shit sale. And I think when you buy things in bulk, you could utilize it. You don't necessarily have to cook it right there. You can throw it in the freezer and use right. it for another time when you have the time to cook. 
so I know that um, a lot of us, um, since I'm home a lot, my husband and I don't really feel like we get a lot of date nights per se, but mm-hmm. What is, do you have like a go-to meal if you're trying to create a, a romantic dinner, if you will, but on a budget? But on a budget? Well, you know, the tuna tostadas, that's one thing that I really enjoy eating and it's like a special treat. But if you guys want to do something different, you can always take steak or, um, you know, a nice pasta. You could just do a pasta dish with veggies. So if you make a special pasta, say it doesn't even have to be, I'm thinking like a nice linguine with some fresh broccolini and onions and maybe throw in some sausage, which is very inexpensive. Mm-hmm. Touch a cream. You have a nice little pasta dish that you could eat together with some sliced warm bread if you want, or a salad. Um, so I think that there's dishes that you can do that can be fancy and date style, but I think maybe setting the table, um, those little things that make it a little bit fancier, like you know, sometimes I'm just sitting at the Island bar with my husband and just sitting there and be like, okay, I'm so tired. I just want to eat and go to bed. You uh-huh. know, right, so right. Setting the table using maybe the linen napkins that you haven't used in a while and just making it a little fancier and having that like ambiance. So are there things that um, we try to cook fresh? We try to do homemade as much as possible. I'm, I'm, I'm not quite there to like making the pasta on my own, but are are there things that you think are kind of an easier thing to use, like with a semi-homemade approach? Are there things that you actually still lean towards? Like for me, I still use brownie mix. It's, it's just easier for me and it's more cost effective. It's great. No jar tomato sauce, like the red, like a jar tomato sauce that you like. I use that all the time as my base. And then I add things to it. So I might add more garlic or I might add olives and capers and kind of do a twist on that. But I feel like there's such good things that you can use. But if you have the time and you want to make your grandmother's red sauce, like awesome. But sometimes as, you know, busy people, you just don't have that. So you can take the red sauce and you can implement it into different dishes and use it and repurpose it in different ways. So I noticed that uh, in, in a lot of your episodes, you you mentioned shopping your pantry, uh, which is something that we work towards. Um, mm-hmm. Have there been times or when there are times that you're doing that and you're missing one key ingredient, how do you approach that? Do you have recommendations for simple things that would be a substitution? Yeah, I, you know, I think that people get intimidated and they feel like, oh, this recipe has to have this one dish. Yeah, there's all basic components that like, okay, it might be missing the basil or it might be missing the green onions. But if you don't have the green onions, then think of onions, onions. Okay, I have a yellow onion or I might have a red onion or maybe I won't add onion. I'll just do a little bit of a garlic or I'll add some carrots or something into this vegetable. So I feel like people can really scribble outside the lines and try different things and don't get so paralyzed that this is the recipe and I have to follow it to the T, you know? Absolutely. So what would be something, so I, I love your show. I was actually just recently introduced to me. And um, so I, I cook a lot. I'm, I'm not a chef, but I cook a lot. Yeah. Um, so what would be something that you would want people to, to take away when it comes to your idea of fed and frugal? I mean, I know the, say, the name is self-explanatory, but something yeah. that you would want to throw out there about the show. I just, I want to inspire people to get in the kitchen and to start cooking. I feel like we can go out to eat and go get our coffees and it's nice to go do that. Those are special treats, but in everyday situation, that money adds up. And if I could teach someone one basic foundation skill to try to start cooking and get in the kitchen and learn to be creative in shopping your pantry, Mm -hmm. that's, that's a way to save and it's a way to learn and to feed yourself. Um, Is there something, um, I know a lot of people like, um, so I have two sisters, one of them, um, is in the kitchen all the time, like me. And one of them is definitely not. And it's more like a a fear of cooking and a fear of going like, this just isn't going to work out. So do you have like quick pointers on just how to get started? Um, I'm working on that with, I have a 13 year old daughter. Like we're just getting started. She's kind of interested, but not really sure. Yeah. I think start simple. I think people look at these recipes that are overly complicated and might be um, easy to one person to another. Learning the basic foundations of 
cooking, maybe work on your knife skills and chopping, um, start with quesadillas or uh, scrambled eggs, you know, things that are like, I am going to learn how to make rice today. So try that and then move on to something that's maybe a little bit more challenging instead of being like, I'm going to do this huge lasagna dish with garlic bread in this homemade Caesar salad. Like that is overwhelming for someone that does not normally cook. So maybe just start, I'm going to make croutons for my Caesar salad and then buy the dressing and the mix and stuff right, like, that. Right. like I'm learning one step, you know? So we're running out of time. Um, so for my last question, if you had three things that you wanted to send people out into the new year with um, that are working on a frugal journey of cooking, what would those three things be? Three things. I would say shop sales, buy things in bulk and shop your pantry. Absolutely. <laughs> it's been lovely talking to you. I love your so show. Nice to talk to you. It's, it's been very inspiring. So thank you so much for your time today. And I can't wait to see what you come up with next. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Happy new year. Same to you. Take care.